six of our 13 day Halloween countdown and today we are going to be working on a Frankenstein popcorn wrapper. So the first thing we need to do is upload our file. So I'm going to click over here once I've got Design Space open and click upload and then upload image and then I'm going to browse. You can either browse to it or you can um, if you've already got it open like in your finder or your um, file manager you can go to it that way too. These are popcorn wrappers, this is Frankie, and then I'm just going to grab the file that is an SVG, which basically tells your Cricut how to cut, and I'm going to upload that, and I'm going to do the first one, it's got a space, and then I'm going to do the second one that actually has um, just the rest of the box, and then I'm going to tell it upload. And all those bright pinks are actually pattern paper, so be thinking about what kind of pattern paper you're planning on cutting. Um, I'm going to select the two. I know I've got them selected when they've got that green bounding box, and then I'm going to add to canvas. Okay, so now, really to prep this, the only thing we really need to do is make sure all of our blacks are the same black, unless you want to use like a charcoal black and then a black black. And then um, we need to s um, specify our score lines. So the first thing I'm going to do is ungroup this section over here that I've got. It, when they come in as an SVG, they just come in all grouped. So you just click over here to ungroup, and then I'm going to go ahead and click one of, or off, off the image, and then one of these score lines, and that'll show me over here on the side where those score lines are located at as far as my file. And then I can just start select, hold my shift key and start selecting layers over here. And there should be six of them on this piece because it's the box part that actually holds the popcorn. And I can tell that I've got score lines because they're red. In my files, the score lines are always red. And then I'm going to click on the operation and switch that to score. And then once that's done, I'm going to just scroll down a little bit and it's going to show me that base card. And I'm going to hold my shift key and select that as well. And then I'm going to attach those score lines to that card, which basically just tells the Cricut, score the lines on this section of the card instead of just throwing them off somewhere else on a different piece of paper. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing with this little front or yeah I think this is the front I can't remember now yeah that's the front um, with the front of our card we're gonna do um, I gotta find the score line so I just highlighted this and then there should be a score line kind of close by looks like it's right there it wasn't very close I'm gonna switch that to score and then I'm gonna just hold my shift key and click on the actual green background instead of having to dig down through my layers panel and attach that and when you attach things it brings it to the front of your of your um, screen you can either leave it just so that you know you've already done it or if you want to move it to the back you can do arrange send to back or you can use this command or these keystrokes to do that and it's command shift left bracket and it sends it backwards again okay and then we've got one more to do over here we haven't ungrouped this image yet so I click on it click on group and then I'm going to find the score line, change the operation to score, hold my shift key and click this back plate, and then attach. So now those are done, and it should be prepped. I'm going to go over to my color sink really fast and just decide, do I want his hair and his scar to be the same kind of black as the his eyeballs and everything, or do I want him to be a lighter black? And I think I'm okay with them all being the same, so I'm going to grab this one and drag it up. And then that will just tell my machine, hey, cut this all out of the same color. Don't don't give me two different mats for two different types of blacks. And I think that's everything in there that's black. These are the bolt covers or the ends of the bolts. I want those to be a darker gray and for the like this the lug part of it to be a lighter gray. And then these are my pattern papers. If you want multiple pattern papers, maybe think about changing the colors of a few of these. And I'll show you. I'm going to do the same because I want I want three different pattern papers actually. I want this one that's in the back to be different from this one and different from this one. So I need at least three colors there. And then this one, it could be, actually I want these two to be the same. So I'm going to leave them pink. I'm going to turn this one a funky yellow just so I remember. Uh, this one funky orange and then this one funky purple 
and honestly those colors would go with Halloween too but I'm just gonna try to remember in this case that they do not go with that I want them to be pattern papers okay and then I'm gonna go ahead and click make it and I will meet you back here to put this together hopefully when the train is gone all right now that you've got all your pieces cut for the Frankenstein popcorn wrapper we're gonna go ahead and put that together I'm gonna just start with the belly band right off the bat because it's a piece that's quick and easy and it'll give it some time to dry before we're ready to bend it around the, the popcorn wrapper. It's just one of those things you can do quick and put it on the side. I'm just going to run some glue down the edges. And again, I just went through my Halloween paper stash because I have couple envelopes like those 12 by 12 storage envelope things full of Halloween papers and embellishments and just the fun stuff tags that kind of thing so I'm gonna try to use up a lot of that so I'm gonna use this for the belly band and set that aside um, anything that has score lines you want to do that before you actually start gluing anything to it so I'm going to pull out the three pieces that have score lines just put that there, and fold along those score lines. You want to fold your score lines before you actually put glue on things because the liquid um, or the moisture from the glue, if you're using liquid glue, will actually cause them to not fold as crisp. And with this little pocket, this is the pocket that the popcorn actually sits in. So you just fold all of these. If you're, if you're holding it like right side up, Fold them all away from you. And just make sure you got a pretty good crease on those and then you can set that aside. It's going to have this piece and I think there should be a piece of pattern paper that goes with it. I'm doing it this way. So that'll be those pieces and then you'll have some strips like this. These two long ones go with your front and back piece and then there should be two short ones, two or three short ones, three short ones still in there too. And then these are all just my background papers that I chose for patterns. Okay. And I could, this one can go either way. I'm not sure if I'll use it this way or this way. I'm just going to look and see how busy it is. Same with this one. Um, I, let, I chose it for this pattern, but we'll see how that goes. Okay. So you should have an F cut out of one and a B cut out of the other for front and back. The front one you're going to hold right side up and you are going to fold that score line away from you. The back one you are going to hold front side up with the B the right way and you are going to fold that crease towards you. Okay, So you should have one up and one down and then they're going to stick together to form the pocket or the, the book that opens and closes. And then once you have that since we've already got these pieces out, I'm going to go ahead and glue those on and give them some time to sit too. There's one for the panel that goes on the front and it goes like if you're looking at your panel with the F right side up, it's going to go on the left hand side on that score line. It's going to have a little bit of a border all the way around it and this is just to kind of add a little bit more visual appeal to the edge, like the binding of our little box that holds the popcorn. I'm going to set that aside for a second. And then you've got your B for background. And it's folded up towards you. And you're going to open this up and put it on the inside flap. So this is the little strip that goes on the inside. And again, you should have just a little bit of a border. And that's just so when we open it up, it, there's just a pop of color and a little bit of decoration on the inside there. Okay, so that's your front and your back. Um, we are pretty much ready to start decorating it. I think I'm missing one of these. I don't know what I did with it. Oh, no, I'm not. We just have Frankie's face. Okay, so the, the pattern paper that gets cut out that's the full height and width of the box goes on the, the back page. So this is the B for back. 
and it goes on the back inside of your box. And oof, this purple is pretty cool too, but let's see how it looks with, let's look at our pattern papers here. This one goes on the front for Frankie's clothes. So it probably won't be that. I'm going to do the stripes for that one. Stripes for this one. I kind of like the black better. Okay, so I'm going to run some glue. That one even kind of like looks like his head with the hair up here in the corners. Like it was meant to be, but I'll just have to make another one, I guess. And again, you'll have a little bit of a border around the edges. Okay. And then this one goes on the inside like this. And it's just so if you wanted to like put a sentiment or something there, you could. You can do it down here too if you want so that it's like kind of backing this. It's just a little bit of a breakup in the pattern. So I'm going to glue this one on. And if you have double-sided sticky tape or a tape runner or whatever, you can be using that here, obviously. I'm just using glue because that's what I have and it's the fastest thing I use. I keep telling myself to get some runner tape and then I forget. And I'm so used to doing paper piecings that need glue that it's just like the thing I reach for first. I do like the double-sided score tape though. And then that one should line up with your bottom pattern paper. And you can leave this out if you wanted to, like if you just wanted this pattern paper and or you wanted this to be just the white part to be the sentiment placed on the inside of this, that's entirely up to you. Like you've got options there. Okay, I'm gonna set the back aside. I'm gonna work on the front. I'm gonna glue this pattern paper to the front bottom. And it's basically gonna be the part that gets covered by the belly band and it's gonna kind of sort of look like his clothes. It also covers that F that we cut out to know which ones are front and back. And we are ready to decorate him. So we've got hair, and this is part of the sentiment that's going to go on the belly band, but I also found this, so I'm contemplating either just using it the size it is or cutting it down to just that black outline. I have, haven't decided yet, because it's pretty much the size of what I was intending for a sentiment. So i got to think about that for a second. Um, these green go with that inside pocket. And then you should have his smile. Looks like, I, oh, I thought I lost his scar. His scar and bolts. And then his eyeballs. Okay, so I'm gonna glue his hair on first. I'm, oops, almost did that the wrong side. I'm gonna run some glue along the hair piece. And this lines up with the top of your popcorn box or the popcorn. I don't know, card face, front. Okay. And then the scar goes over here. I think I actually had it running down his face. I can't remember what he looked like. And his smile was on this side. And this actually goes on the white first so that it looks like he's got teeth. And then that way you don't have to mess with little teeth. You just put the black over the white. Kind of offset his grin. Each of your bolt pieces should have a, a top, like a cover, to make it look like it's, and you could pop dot these too if you wanted them to be a little bit more dimensional. I'm just going to glue for the sake of time. foam dot those too. That would be kind of cute. Let's do that. I'm going to stick a foam dot on the back of each of these and that's how I'm going to stick them to his head. Is with a foam dot like that. And these foam dots I got, they're the papery um, 
brand, and I got them, I think, at Hobby Lobby. They might sell them at Joann's, too. I don't remember. I just grabbed them one day when I was out running around. And then these eyeballs. You could foam dot these, too, if you wanted. I might foam dot the actual eyeballs. That is pupils. Oops, I think I just did that. I did. Texture side. Okay, that just made it too greasy. Maybe I'll shimmer them up anyway. Oh, I'm struggling with that one. Okay, I'll look really quick. And you can obviously make him look cross-eyed if you want to, or regular-eyed, or have him looking up or down. I'm not happy with the way I kind of screwed that. I'm going to have to put some glossy accents or something on it. Um, and I didn't give him enough room underneath his scar, so I'm going to kind of pull that just a little. There we go. And I'm going to foam dot those. I had a few wayward ones that were sticking to the back, so I just grabbed those two. And then... slide his scar down his chin a little bit more too if you need a little bit more space for his eyeballs if you don't want to make him look um, cross-eyed and you wanted to or like goofy you could make him have a little bit more space for his eyeballs that's pretty cute though that's kind of glue off there okay so we've got the front done let's finish up the pocket and then we'll decide on the belly band so I just need to glue this pattern paper to cardstock mat and it, so it should have like just a nice small like eighth inch of a of a border around it and then this gets glued to the front of the box this is the pouch that holds our popcorn flatten this out it's way easier to glue all of these things on before you actually assemble the box so I'm just gonna do all this really quick this is the bottom band. And then the two side bands. And then I'm going to grab my half inch score tape and I'm going to use that for creating the box. So I'm just going to run a strip across this bottom piece. I guess it's not really a box, it's like a half box. I'm going to use these scissors because I don't care if they get sticky. They have seen better days but they still work. I don't even know, is Provo Craft even a company anymore? Like, do they even do scrapbook stuff anymore? There's so many companies that just aren't in existence anymore. Okay, and then two little chunks for the tabs. You're going to want something kind of long that you can like kind of push down in there and press across the inside of the box just to kind of get things secured. And I'll show you what I mean here in a second. Finish getting these 
Done up. Um, so the first thing you're going to do is fold these flaps in and then attach those little tiny flaps to the bottom. Okay, and that's going to kind of hold it where it needs to be. And then you're going to fold these two. You can either fold the bottom in and the sides over them or vice versa. I think it's more secure if you do the bottom in and then the sides over it. So I'm going to pull this one off and fold my sides in. And I'm just kind of making sure that they're flush up against that score line to make sure that it's a nice, straight, even box. Okay, And then that bottom is still going to be a little sticky. And then pull these edges off. garbage out of the way and then you need the back part of your box and you're going to hold this flap up and use it to butt this up against it on the side okay don't put it down yet until you're like lined up where you want if you're using this tape because once you stick it it's stuck and then line up your bottom edge with the bottom of the paper okay and you can line it up with this if you want it to be a little bit more raised that's okay it doesn't have to come clear down here to this bottom edge but either this edge or that edge for your popcorn. There's still enough room up there that it doesn't matter one way or the other. But if you fold this up, it kind of helps keep you level too. I'm going to go with the bottom edge of that white. Okay. And then when I said you need something long, remember, it's just to kind of go in there and press that. If you used glue, it presses your glue and gets a good seal. And if you use this tape, it just helps you get it stuck down where it belongs. secures it. Okay, so now we're going to run, it's probably easier to run it on the inside of this one. I'm going to run up a line of tape right there, and I don't know, that one's going to be a little too thick, so I'm going to run this one but twice and kind of overlap it. I'm just going to run it down the edge of the, the paper each time, front and back, or top and bottom. And if you're using liquid glue or your tape runner, this is where you'll put that. I mean, duh. But whatever adhesive you're using, this is where you put it. Just make sure that you cover that panel because this is what's going to hold your two pieces together to make the book or the, the little folding part of our popcorn holder. Okay, so now that I have that done, I'm just going to carefully line this up with that score line and my top and, my, or sorry, my right and left edges. I'm going to line those up and then kind of tuck this straight edge into the score line of this. And that's how I know it's going to be lined up. And then when I get it where I want it, I'm just going to press. Okay, so now it folds over itself beautifully closes and you've got this cute little Frankenstein that your popcorn will slip right into okay so your popcorn pocket and see it it just stops right there at that pattern piece if you had something else like you wanted to shove like two or three Hershey's bars in there you could or you could maybe like a little pack of graham crackers and chocolate I don't know whatever whatever you can get to fit in there I'm sure it will be super cute so then we're gonna do the belly band and you can do it with or without the popcorn. Popcorn in there kind of gives you a better idea of how it's going to feel. But as long as you're not, if you don't have the popcorn handy yet, as long as you're not squishing this box down too flat, like see how it kind of sinks in without the popcorn, just don't sink it that flat. Try to keep it like light pressure right here on the edges. But you're going to take the belly band, kind of line it up center, and then wrap it around, gently folding just to get an idea of where it's going to line up back here in the back. And then I usually just kind of loosen it just a tiny bit just to kind of give it some leeway for that and so that it's not stuck so tight I can't get it off. And then I start my glue line where I saw it overlapping, about right in there. And then I'll put a little bit on the end of this one just in case I didn't quite measure enough. Okay, and then just gently close them up. If you've got scrap paper, stick it underneath there and then press so that you're not squishing that glue out onto the back of your box. 
And then once you're sure it's going to hold, you can just slip that off. Okay. And then finish pressing it. Make sure if you use the score tape, obviously it's going to be stuck stuck already. And then we are ready for the sentiment. So I just have to decide, do I like it that wide or do I want it to stay inside? I think I'm going to trim my orange and just kind of trim like just kind of a little peekaboo of that orange around the outside edge. So if you've already got like pre-made tags, you could use those for your sentiment. If you wanted to cut something with the Cricut, obviously, if you've got stamps. I kind of just did the black and white like this so that you could stamp a sentiment if you've got them. Or you can run it through your printer and have it say something. Um, you can still use that for an inside, like to from if you wanted to. If you're giving these out as gifts. And I am just eyeballing a quick little orange shadow around this tag. If you have die cuts that do this shape, you could always make something that way too. I am going to stick this to the belly band right here, which means it's going to get a really good stick because it's going to go across there pretty far. And then use this popcorn wrapper is a wrap. Haha, <laughs> it's done. I don't know what it is about Halloween colors, but they just make me happy. They go well together. They're kind of moody and folly, but still kind of cheery at the same time. Okay. There he is. Ready to go. Go ahead and hit subscribe. Like the video. Hit the notification bell for more. We are, this was day six of our 13 day Halloween countdown. Come on back for number seven, which will be out tomorrow. If you haven't, if you've missed a file or you want to just get all of them in advance and not worry about trying to make sure you're here every single day to get the files, um, you can buy the whole instant access with all 13 files in it. And then they are all also included inside my mega Halloween bundle. If you're past the time that we've done this countdown and you're watching them then and all these videos should be listed in a playlist make it easy for you to access if you have questions comments let me know share with a friend thanks for watching